Imagine what it would be like if you were inside this car. Individuals with irrigation being thrown at the vehicle. Come on, move that sound. Individual there with a ball bat in his hand. Individual throwing rock stuff at the vehicle. This individual right there used a ball bat. <laughs> Broke a window. This individual right there. Hang on, we ain't gonna try to turn us over. Trying to turn us over right now. Individual right there. At this point, the two security people have been picked up, and the car is on its way back to the Sprouse Creek Preparation Plant. An individual there Since this incident occurred, many of these individuals have been identified. All names, addresses, and identification data are available to any law enforcement agency that could utilize them. See the man with the baseball bat? Do it. There is a large crowd trying to turn this car over. But due to the armor plating, the car can't be overturned. Let's do it. Go! Can we hit the gas? No, just hang on. The gas referred to isn't the accelerator, it's tear gas. Hit the gas. Push it. Yeah. This truck rams the armored car trying to get back to the processing facility. The driver of the truck is Urban Spaulding, international organizer for the UMW of America. Individual right there, Hit red gas button again. Zulu, we are under heavy fire down here. We're still getting a lot of beatings. Getting no assistance from the CR pop. Gas ain't working. Flat tires. Roger, uh, can you back out of the situation? Hey, Data, we're up too close. We're getting more CR popping now. Maybe they can hold them off a little. Okay, so you get down here, you're going to have to dive one way or the other. See if you, they need to clear that out where you can get into uh, serving there. Right, there's quite a few of them walking out. Maybe they can get it under control. Tango, you're going to have to come in seven. We want to shut down. Over. Roger, right, I copy. Here, the man in the tie is bat. Mark Francis of the, the Williamson right Daily there, News, who reported this as a peaceful demonstration. The man in the camouflage jacket is Don Barnett, chief organizer for the southeastern region of the UMW. And now I have the state police walking along beside of us. They're still beating on the car. Still hitting on the car. Got state police on all sides of it. Individuals with baseball bats in their hands. On February 12, 1985, picketing miners formed roadblocks and selectively attacked and beat seven employees. In addition, eight company vehicles were destroyed.
lot more than a week to respond that they want to negotiate in well, addition to what had already been done. And the fact of the matter is the union has never laid anything on the table that, uh, you know, and said to Sprouse Group, sign this, we'll sign. It's always been, as I understand it, you know, we'll talk about this and then we'll talk about more after we resolve these issues. I think that, you know, a lot of people are beginning to wonder whether we're looking after the interest of people at Sprouse Group or whether we're looking at the interest of the union. You know, and I'm sure that sometimes they're not the same, and I can understand that. Well, my response to that is that, uh, as we are looking after the union, however, if we look after the union, that'll take care of Sprouse Street also. It'll take care of the community. Uh, of course, our, uh, our concerns are is that we want a, we want a contract that's going to guarantee our folks here at Sprouse Street the opportunity to work under the present structure that, that you're well aware of. Uh, even the signing, just by signing the contract alone, that you, as president of all sales, could terminate the contract with Brown Street Process. Well, that's one thing I can speak authoritatively about. If you want a 30 day cancellation out of it, that's not a problem. As you know, all these companies have had problems with panel rights primarily because, you know, we don't want to penalize the good employees that we have and not be able to take care of them and have them penalized by persons who are more senior but maybe aren't as good a worker. Okay, now let me ask and That's you. been the problem let me, that, let me that all of them have expressed, as I understand. Now you're saying as president of, of Royal Sales that you have the authority to eliminate that 30-day clause under the stand, standard contractual arrangement between Royal Sales, Browse Creek, Royal Sales, Rock Island, all of the companies that fall under that Royal Sales group. I can't unilaterally do that, but naturally I'm sure that the companies would prefer it be that way, and I, as president of Royal Sales, I can say that Royal Sales has no problem with that part of the contract as far as making uh, say, taking the cancellation a, out for the life of the contract. They sign an addendum to the contract, that 30-day termination clause, and there will be a vote. That's correct. Uh, now we're good uh, the companies over the last several years have lost money, although the last, last couple of years has been extremely rough. At 8 this morning, a 30-30 slug tore through the windshield of this truck, practically ripping apart the shoulder of 35-year-old Hayes West of Raccoon Creek. 30 rounds came flying into this truck within a matter of seconds, obviously organized, obviously designed to come into the cab of the truck. When it was over, one man was dead, another injured. The tragedy continues. Kentucky State Police have reportedly found the spent shell casings, the exact area from where the shots were fired. Our investigation showed that there was numerous shots fired into the coal truck. At this time, state police officers are in the area uh, they're conducting the investigation, try to obtain evidence that would assist us in the case. Uh, we have no suspects at this time. But those close to the situation believe the violence is related to the strike between the United Mine Workers Union and A.T. Massey. Across the border in West Virginia, another independent coal truck driver wounded by gunfire on the same road where the mine workers strike against Massey has seen many acts of violence. Back in Kentucky, the brother of the slain driver and eyewitness to the carnage says he's been begging police to just enforce the law for two and a half months now. They should, should be doing something instead of waiting somebody to lose their life to get something done. Now they should do something. They should have done something before this happened. And we've been shot in twice. On the 18th of April, we was hit around 30 rounds as far as it does. Mine Workers Union representatives say their men are not involved, but a spokesman for A.T. Massey Cole called it intimidation murder. More than 250 coal trucks gathered for a caravan to the funeral. Drivers tied black claws to their trucks and hung this sign on the truck the snipers attacked. <laughs> On the way to the funeral, they drove over the same roads the man they came to bury drove over. Behind me is the spot where sniper fire killed Hayes West. Philip West stopped here to honor his dead brother. That ain't nothing but a pure mob, violent, rock, and the phone call come Sunday night. Said they're going to be a massacre murder. Told me, said if you ever go back, said well, you're going to be the next one. Does it make you think twice about hauling coal non-union? Yeah, but that's their living. We got to do it. I got truck payments I have to make. I got a family I have to feed. And that's the only way I can do it. I have to call non union call and I will. The church where relatives paid their last respects to Hayes West. Hey, 
Chris Swindell, WSAZ News Center 3, Pikeville, Kentucky. Massey's president, Don Blankenship, thinks the union's responsible for its own problems. He showed us these tapes made in his bulletproof car by his camera crew during the strike three years ago. The thing that broke the union was their breaking our windshields and, uh, and breaking our houses in two and burning homes and, and shooting into offices and so forth. So I don't take responsibility for breaking the union. I leave that with their leadership. We're still getting a lot of beatings. Some of the strikers you're looking at told us later that it was his guards who provoked the incident. You'd probably be surprised that I believe that if you didn't have unions or you didn't have certain laws and you didn't have things to prevent it, that the uh, companies could return to, you know, pretty poor treatment of their workers. Demonstrators tried again this day to block non-union coal trucks from entering a strike-bound processing plant in Mingo County. Earlier in the week, the union had put thousands of demonstrators in the street. But the United Mine Workers cut back the number of pickets and changed tactics in their peaceful sit-down to block the road. Most demonstrators moved on police orders, but a few were arrested as each convoy of coal trucks arrived. Striking miner Chuck Wood had his reasons for refusing to move. It's just something that that uh, we've uh, been fighting for, and if, if I have to get arrested to do it, I'll I'll do it. Not all the demonstrators who were arrested were miners. Four women, including a 72-year-old great-grandmother and 67-year-old Elizabeth Vagat, were picked up by state police when they refused to clear the highway. Because my whole family had been miners, union people, and I'm here to support them. I have nephews on this that's fighting for their jobs right now. Planned contract negotiations between the UMW and the company hit a snag. The UMW said it won't meet until Sprouse Creek Processing halts the coal shipments. The company says it won't stop. Well, I think that the, the fact that the parties are agreeing to negotiate Sprouse Creek and the union does not uh, preclude the fact that the company needs to try to operate in order to maintain its marketplace and the uh, companies have been on strike for the last five months without productive negotiation. But they have agreed to drop their threat to fire 48 striking employees. Strikers are still willing to be arrested to make their point, and the company says it will do what it has to to ensure its economic survival. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Mingo County. There's been no massive show of force by state police at Southern West Virginia mining operations hit by strike-related violence earlier this week. But more troopers are now patrolling the troubled A.T. Massey coal mining subsidiaries. Governor Arch Moore ordered in the extra police after hundreds of striking miners blocked a highway near Rawl Sales and the Sprouse Creek Processing Plant Tuesday. Four people were injured and several vehicles were damaged. We encountered about, must have been 75 to 80 pickets uh, along the highway. And uh, as I started through them, they began rocking the vehicle, uh, uh, throwing rocks and stones at it. And uh, after we'd gotten through, although we didn't hear gunfire, there seems to appears to be markings on the side of the vehicle that uh, were made by uh, gunshots. Blankenship blamed United Mine Workers Union President Rich Trumka in part for the violence. Monday, Trumka called for escalating the strike, but the UMW president did not endorse violence. Blankenship admitted the company's decision to process coal at the strike-bound plant probably triggered the trouble. The weather has turned into the major problem for this A.T. Massey subsidiary now, but the strong feelings that led to violence on the picket lines earlier in the week are still around. This day, 20 inches of snow was apparently enough to keep pickets away. But more trouble is possible if weather conditions allow the company to resume coal processing next week as planned. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Mingo County. No one tried to move more than a thousand marchers who showed up for the second day of mass protests at a strike-bound coal processing plant. 
Sprouse Creek Processing belongs to the A.T. Massey Coal Group. The demonstration was largely peaceful, but rocks as well as insults were hurled at a security guard with a camera. No one was hurt, and union organizers stopped the rock throwing. Last week, Rawl Sales Company President Don Blankenship says he was the target of rocks and at least one bullet on the way to work. But he came out alone to talk to strikers Tuesday. Blankenship sat down at a toy table with union negotiators. In the debate that followed, he said the company would probably agree to drop a 30-day lease provision that workers felt threatened their future. But he said he wouldn't budge on other job security issues. He said a union request for seniority rights throughout the Massey mines would force the company to retain unproductive workers. We've tried to be good to our members, to the union, to the community, and everyone else. And now, despite the economy being in a situation it is, we're asked to pay more, we're asked to do more, and it's just impossible to continue to do so and, uh, and be competitive. The union men were equally firm about the so-called panel rights or seniority issue, but they seemed pleased the company was talking. We did open a dialogue between the company and the union in regards to trying to negotiate this contract in a peaceful manner. Blankenship said he didn't think much had been accomplished, but he admitted it will be difficult to attract non-union workers to run the processing plant during mass demonstrations. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Mingo County. Massey's taking their jobs and giving them to another And you can plainly see Unmistakably that it's wrong the music, the sit-downs, and the slogan, Hearts, Minds, and Smiles, are a new development for the United Mine Workers Union. But the nonviolent tactics of the civil rights era have characterized the UMW's official approach to the selective strike against the A.T. Massey Coal Group. Union organizers are convinced that it's working. We are peace-loving people, and all we want is a fair and just contract, and we are going to get it. But company officials say striking miners are still engaging in behind-the-scenes violence. And they point out the violence caused by more than 200 men who jumped non-union employees on the way to work February the 12th. This tape was made by a company security guard. Yeah, 12th February 1985, you see a vehicle that is turned over, two vehicles that is turned over in the middle of the road. Apparently, the strikers have done this. Well, I think most people are familiar with the events. I think of February the 12th, where uh, seven people were hospitalized and many vehicles were totally destroyed. But on numerous occasions, there's been uh, other violence. For example, buildings being burned. Uh, just this past weekend, one of the contractors of Cumberland Village had his home uh, uh, shot up with a shotgun. But most of the miners are pleased with what they see as the success of peaceful tactics. One union man says the coal operators are mad because they can't provoke the strikers into doing something bad. Blankenship claims he can document several instances of strike-related violence. They include the February 12th incident that prompted the governor to send in extra state troopers to Mingo County. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Mingo County. There's a question of who is to blame for the trouble in the southern West Virginia coal fields, but there is no question that people are being hurt with disturbing frequency. Ask the company security guard who was afraid to tell us his name. I uh, looked, I was looking out the window, out the windshield, and I seen a rock hit the windshield, and when I, as soon as I turned to look out my side window, it just blew out in my face. I got glass in my eyes. Ask the four coal strike supporters who had their car crushed Friday by a coal truck like these hauling non-union coal. The United Mine Workers Union has been trying to stop the shipment of non-union coal into a cleaning plant operated by the A.T. Massey Coal Group. Most of the union's actions over the past few weeks have been non-violent, but that changed this week when the company stepped up coal shipments from Kentucky. Thursday, non-union coal trucks smashed through a UMW blockade. They smashed into miners' cars. The miners retaliated by throwing rocks and burning a company truck. UMW President Rich Trumka charged the company with engaging in violent tactics that endanger lives and property. Company officials called strikers a mob of UMW thugs. Union Vice President Cecil Roberts says the strikers' reaction to the trucks is understandable. No one anywhere is going to stand by while people try to kill them or run over them and destroy their property. Company officials call the union's claim of peaceful tactics a sham. But I have felt that the last several days that any uh, use of the word peaceful would be a misuse of that word. 
The increasingly bitter strike against the A.T. Massey Coal Group and a few other mines involves about 2,500 miners. Most of them work in West Virginia and Kentucky. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Pike County, Kentucky. Even without this sign, non-union coal truck drivers wouldn't expect an easy trip across United Mine Workers Union picket lines. The gate pickets are peaceful, but the truckers are finding their vehicles targets for snipers in the heavily wooded areas of Kentucky and West Virginia where they travel. The UMW and the A.T. Massey Coal Group have been engaged in a bitter labor dispute since last October. Monday, non-union coal truck driver Steve Kinzer was shot as he drove his truck in West Virginia. The 23-year-old West Virginia man is still being treated in a Lexington, Kentucky hospital. Massey officials blame the UMW for the shooting. Well, I think it's just been luck that somebody hadn't been shot before, so I don't think the situation's any different than it has been the last six weeks or so. We've had uh, 25 coal trucks and several homes and cars shut up during that period of time, and actually we uh, were lucky that someone hadn't been shot before yet. Pickets deny the union is responsible for the shooting. Striker John Elkins said drivers may have staged some of the earlier shooting incidents to raise their hauling rates. State troopers have no doubts the latest sniper attack was for real. But their efforts to identify the gunman have been unsuccessful so far. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Mingo County, West Virginia. While Kentucky State Police arrested another picket for rock throwing, the investigation into the murder of a 35-year-old non-union trucker continued. But nearly a dozen troopers were tied up guarding and sometimes ticketing non-union coal trucks that have frequently become the targets for snipers in recent weeks. The violence is not one-sided. Troopers also arrested six men for allegedly burning down a United Mine Workers Union picket shelter in apparent retaliation for the killing of driver Hayes West Wednesday. The FBI has now entered that case, and troopers have found guns hidden in the woods near the murder scene on Highway 119. Uh, we found some weapons within the vicinity of where this incident occurred on Wednesday. Those weapons uh, are at this time being processed by the Kentucky State Police with the assistance of the FBI and Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Division. Troopers think the killing is strike related. They say fear and the split between union and non-union people in the area are making it tough to get information. Some doubt the violence will end until the strike does, but Massey coal officials have refused to negotiate until the violence stops. West Virginia Governor Arch Moore is denying that his state police have failed to deal strongly with strike violence. However, coal company officials said Kentucky troopers are more aggressive about enforcing the law. They're going to a funeral in Kentucky. We're not doing that in the state of West Virginia. But police on both sides of the state line are watching and expecting more trouble. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Pike County, Kentucky. The non-union coal trucks roared along Blackberry Creek with American flags flying and rock-proof windshields. They ran a gauntlet of pickets. Some of them threw paint and spikes specially made to flatten the tires of the big trucks. A trucker was arrested for wanton endangerment. State troopers tried to identify pickets responsible for the latest damage. It was a typical day in an increasingly violent clash between union and non-union forces in Pike County, Kentucky. We're trying to get Black Bear Creek back to normal working and living conditions. We want the guards taken away. We want the lights taken away. And we want these coal trucks, and the pickets even, we want everything back to normal. Hatfield and others have set up a special public meeting Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Blackberry Grade School. They've invited local and state politicians to attend. Organizers hope the meeting will generate pressure on Massey Coal and the United Mine Workers Union to settle the nearly nine-month-old strike. They say children will be out of school during the summer, putting them in the line of fire. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Pike County, Kentucky. And that is why we need federal legislation to deal with this, because it cannot be accomplished politically in, in, on its own. Morgan Massey would like to be able to federally prosecute striking miners he blames for injuring 75 of his workers, destroying more than 170 vehicles, and slashing nearly 1,700 truck tires. A.T. Massey Cole is the target of a strike by the United Mine Workers Union. The UMW accuses Massey of union busting. Massey blames UMW leaders for what he calls the twisted logic of union terrorism. 
He says if violent union action were a federal crime against interstate commerce, it would be stopped. He blamed West Virginia Senator Robert Byrd for tabling federal legislation that would affect the strike. And I want you to know that that bill never got out of committee because your own Senator Byrd voted against it. While mildly praising Governor Arch Moore, Massey said political pressures keep the state authorities from doing what they should. On October 1st, the strike that has seen people on both sides hurt will be...